Welcome back to Awakening Reformation, where Reformation awakens now. My name is Grant, and joined with me is my beautiful wife, Erica, the weaker vessel. Hello, everyone. If you want to get to know more about the podcast, we're a part of the Reformed Rebel Network. You can find us on social media. There are other podcasts in the network, the Rebel Podcast. We've included The Great Exchange, and we also put out the Ezra Institute podcast with Joe Boot and friends. Um, podcast for cultural reformation, I believe is what they call that one. Some really great, uh, podcasts, yeah. uh, from them recently considering, um, lockdowns and all of the, the, how the church should think about government right now. So I would highly suggest going and checking those out. Mm-hmm. And we've put out some blogs recently by Joe Boot and some others, just kind of keeping people up to date with what is going on with, uh, churches in Ontario. Things are getting real here, guys. It ain't easy. Um, we are in another state of emergency at the moment, so (laughs) air quotes around that, some thick, bold, bold type air quotes around that. And so, so it's difficult for churches to meet. There's a lot that they have to consider if they are going to do that. Some of our friends have been meeting for church in person and have been, um, Mind heavily. find and harassed like they've had nails in parking lots and signs put outside of their church and yeah and the nails in the parking lot was for a drive-in service yes and this is after they were already issued summons to court for violating the you know lockdown orders or Mm -hmm. whatever but drive-in services are legal yeah and they're still catching heat and they found hundreds of nails um in their parking lot knowing that they would be doing a drive-in service so um so it's getting ugly up here it's getting a bit ugly it's getting hard to be a christian yeah believe it or not in the western Mm. western world you know there's something so healthy about that though go on well i mean it's just no one loves to be persecuted no one loves to face trials but when you do face a trial it does make you rely on the lord Mm -hmm. and it's strengthening for you that faith muscle becomes stronger um and also, Grant's getting a phone call. I just let it go. That's fine. <laughs> there we go. All right. And also, um, it just really helps you understand who your people are. That's true. Right? Like when you are facing a trial of any kind, not even just like a government overreach kind of trial like we're facing now, but mm-hmm. like even personal trials, the people who show up are your people. And it, there's that old saying that the person who helps you move your couch is your true friend right yeah the person the people that come to help you move are are your best friends yeah and it's there's truth to that though there's an analogy about the like the strongest trees are the ones who can survive a hurricane or it's like through because their roots go down deep right yeah through the storm Mm -hmm. the their roots kind of um have to grow thicker and deeper Mm -hmm. and stronger and so that ends up becoming strongest trees the ones that can withstand a storm right and the chaff blows away right and this is i think one of the saddest parts but the healthiest parts of being in the christian church right now is that there is a lot of chaff blowing away yeah it's sad to realize what the chaff is or who the chaff is right Right. because these are people that you have loved and you have done ministry with Mm -hmm. or have looked up to or whatever and now we're seeing a lot of our evangelical leaders or our pastors or, you know, just yeah, fellow that, congregation members. Right. Probably people you respected or have been greatly helped by in your faith, too. Right. And they're going apostate. Right. If and they're not yeah. careful, that's that's where they're going to end up. Right. Um, it's a funny story. When I was a kid, I remember my parents telling me, I don't remember how I asked them this question, <laughs> but I remember them telling me when you get to heaven, there'll be... A lot of people there that you didn't expect to be there. And then there'll be a lot of people there you expect to be there that aren't. Yeah. And I was like, all right, it's probably some good perspective as a kid growing up. And then here we are. Yeah. In a time where you're like, what? Really? That person? Right. You know, that leader, that pastor, that author. Sheesh, I thought, you know. and Right. And so goes our times right now. Mm-hmm. So. Um, So we we do hope everybody had a great holiday season, had a great Christmas. 
I hope you were able to feast with I like how we go friends. from persecution to celebration of Christmas. But that's how you fight it, right? That's how you fight this. It's true. The spirit of this age is that you you gather. You yeah. Don't, uh, um, you know, you don't shake in fear. You gather, you mm-hmm. fellowship, you bless others, invite them into your home, be hospitable, sing together. Right. Read Psalms together. Read Christians the Bible together. need to learn how to party. Right. Right. Like there's a lot of crap going around right now, and we mm-hmm. need to learn to party. Yeah. Like that's how you do it. What did what did um, the Israelites do when they wanted to conquer Jericho? God what did God them tell them to do? Party. You party. Okay. Like you march per- around the city and yeah. you throw a party. Like you play music, the horns, yeah. the cheer. whole thing. You cheer. You la- like be loud, be happy, be exuberant. Right. Yeah. Do you imagine too? Um, and this goes back to just obeying the simple commands of the Lord right now is he told them just one time right on the first six days yeah and then on the seventh day he said seven seven times times. yep did you imagine though you just go one time around and you're like is that it that's how we're going to beat the city right that doesn't seem very effective one time not two or three or imagine even on like the third fourth or like not taking a sledgehammer and just whacking the base of the wall if we just kind of knock the wall a little bit each day maybe is that no it could help right nope nope obey the simple commands of the lord sing his praises and that is how his yeah. enemies fall yeah and that's nice. the thing though it's like faith in god is always crazy isn't it yeah well if so you look like, at how well, god nuts. works it yep. is always the most bizarre thing <laughs> yeah right the bible is full of it it's true because then in our life when something crazy happens and we're like well obeying god right now would just be absolutely insane well good you got a whole book to show that that's how it happens that's how i work so it's true. take joy. And anyway, we hope that you had a great <laughs> holiday season of fighting God's enemies by fellowshipping and rejoicing and opening up presents and giving good gifts, giving good gifts, eating but good But here's food. the thing is it doesn't have to end, right? Like now we're mid-January and I historically have always hated January through March. Like It's yeah. just the most boring, dry. All there's the worst stuff has ever happened during and that's this time. true that's true too but um but it doesn't have to be right like if we right. actually do just practice what the bible tells us to do mm-hmm. it can be such a joyful time and there's sure. no excuse for it not to be this is the day the lord has made let us, us rejoice be and, be and be glad in it, in it. exactly and, and rejoice always whatever happens again, right i say rejoice whatever right. the government's doing whatever the church is doing or not doing or whatever like you rejoice, you invite people into your home, you serve them, love them, yeah. praise God, obey God, and like good will come. Right. No despair. No I despair. I that was A.D. Robles' theme for 2020, no despair. But like, I, I just was thinking as you were saying that, the church has survived how many totalitarian right. governments. Are, worse than what we're facing I mean, now. Definitely worse than what we're facing now. So far, there are no people on pikes lighting up the highways. So we're... Right. We're not being crucified and lined up. We're all right. Yeah. So it's not, saying not it couldn't fun. Happen. But the church... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. It seems like we're headed there. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's not out of the realm of possibility at this point. But it... Um, but we... So all of that to we say... Survive. We will joyfully move forward. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, you can control what you can control and the rest you give to God, trusting that he is working all things for your good and Amen. his glory. Right? Amen. So what can you control? Con- the, the, yes. Yes. Con- 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 <laughs> what can you control? What can you control is your home. Your home. Your, your family. family. And that, babe, was probably the best segue into our series that we're in. We've probably ever done. So we were in, in the middle. I've been practicing. <laughs> All this time off and the holidays and such. Honing in your segue skills. That's that's how I've used my time. They're shining, babe. They're shining. So we were in the middle of a Theology of Family series. We had a general intro episode. Men. And then we got on the men. And I hope that was encouraging to you men. I hope that... Uh, and a little bit provoking. Got you excited. Right? I hope it provoked you to a point where you saw where you could man up and be more godly in the way that you conduct yourself as a man in this world under the mm-hmm. lordship of Jesus. And now we're going to talk about the women. The ladies. Today gonna, is the day the ladies will be provoked unto godliness, hopefully. We pray and hope in yeah. very good ways. 
So, where do we start? Start at the beginning. Isn't that a theme song? It's a very good place to yeah, start. Yeah, right. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's that from? It's from The Sound of Music. Yep, exactly. When you sing, what you begin movie. with... Hey, and they were they were... They were singing and all that, and the Nazis were going. It's true, man. We are really just keeping it together here today. It's uh, okay. so fitting. So, let's start at the beginning in Genesis. Yep. Everyone knows the story. I believe we talked about it when we began talking about men. Mm-hmm. Um, women, the very first woman, Eve, was created for her husband, Adam. Right. And by definition... Adam was her husband, meaning Eve was to be husbanded by Adam. Adam, Right. Um, That's not a term that we use often in culture anymore. No. But when you husband something, it literally means to like take care of, cultivate, nurture, steward. Work work it in a way that more life comes out of it. Yes. And that's what Eve's name means, life, right? Yeah. And Adam was supposed to cultivate and husband Eve so Mm -hmm. that life would come from her. Right. She was not the focal point of creation, right? Like not in the sense of like this was the crowning jewel that God made, which is how a lot of feminine Bible curriculum comes across, right? Mm -hmm. Like finally when Eve came from Adam, then God was finished. They even have their, their sick jokes where they say you know it, uh man was all alone and that wasn't good until woman Eve, came yeah along. there's a lot of really weird feminist things that i have heard in ladies bible studies but we see that um mankind as a whole was god's crown jewel like that was god's right. that was the pinnacle the peace de resistance <laughs> that's right Right? That was... Because they uh, were made in God's image. The masterpiece. Yeah. Nothing else was given the spirit of life. Where it, nothing nothing else in creation was given the breath of life, right? Yes. By the spirit. So. And Adam was made from the dirt and Eve was made from Adam. Right. So Eve is meant to be a servant of Adam. I don't know how else to... Adam's helpmate. I'll make yep. a, help, a helpmate fit for him. Yes. And none of the animals could could uh you know fit the bill they didn't right. they didn't meet all the qualifications absolutely and eve did and adam was very happy mm-hmm. he started singing or reciting poetry either one but bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh you know that was that was poetic and he was obviously very excited to see his wife yep and to get married and one thing that you know we we know this is a another time of of fruitfulness which is what we should look mm-hmm. at marriage and all that yep. kind of thing is not something to be um, like we should look at it biblically, which is this is a very fruitful thing that we should strive for mm-hmm. um, in that we do see this. This is a, a helpful thing that James Jordan, we've we've read about James Jordan explaining this and how death always then brings life mm-hmm. and how Adam was a type of Christ in this way and how he was put into a deep sleep, a type a of death, death, a death like state. Yep. He was torn apart just like Jesus was torn apart. And then the rib is taken out. And then because of this death, you know, experience mm-hmm. this giving up of himself, right. When he's brought back to life, now it's multiplied. And so Jesus resurrecting being mm-hmm. brought back to life, then gives birth to the church. Right. And many Christians are multiplied. And so we see this from the very beginning that this, death a breaking and then a multiplication happens right and this is a this is a glorious thing and so i i guess this is kind of a side point but there are certain pockets of christianity that like to downplay marriage and a focus on the family because of single people or because Mm -hmm. of you know well I, i just don't really feel like getting married right now but my church is always talking about marriage and family and it's just really hard for me or something it's like well but that's like saying the church is always talking about christ and his bride and that's really frustrating well i'm sorry but that's just sort of like i feel like i'm very close to the camera i need to back up a little bit but that's just kind of the nature of what the church is right like the church is a bride so you can't really escape the talk of marriage when you can't escape that metaphor or that symbol right it's embedded in who we are quite literally you know but yeah so um, so then, so then that's where we're at. Women's right? role. So women's then, what role. are we seeing biblically 
is women's role then? Yes, helpmate to Adam. Yes. But the number one goal there, obviously, we can't escape this, everybody. Obviously, Adam names all the animals and they are not a fit helper for him. Mm -hmm. Well, animals can do a lot of agricultural work. They can carry loads. They can do a whole lot of things. But one of the most clear things that they cannot do is bear more Adams. Yeah. They can't bear other Eves. Well, and that's why and she can. was to give life. She was yeah. the creator, in a sense, of life. Like, that's where life was going to come from. Mm -hmm. And if Adam cultivated her correctly, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> that's, that, that's being a husband. Um, then life would have life would have come. That's so awesome. And uh, yeah, so the purpose of marriage is to be fruitful. Right. Children have and, children. Right, and that was part of the cultural mandate. Mm -hmm. in be Genesis fruitful and two. multiply. He blessed them and said. So this is a blessing from God to right. tell us to be fruitful right? Um, and multiply, take dominion of the earth. Mm -hmm. So so what you can derive from the very first couple of chapters in the Bible is that the home and the family are the starting point, the priority yes. of the woman. Yes. Once again, um, not necessarily a popular message. No. In a lot of ladies' Bible studies, you'll probably not find many circles in which women are encouraged to be domestic or to find their place in their home. Mm -hmm. um, and there are two ditches here, right? One ditch is this like almost, it's almost cult, like a cult-like following um, of motherhood. Right. Like, yeah. and I, I've seen this time and time again where like motherhood is a calling, motherhood is the point, motherhood, motherhood, motherhood. And that's true. Mm -hmm. It is a big portion of what God created a woman to do. It's a blessing and it is a calling from the Lord. It is something that women should strive to do. Um, but then there's the other ditch and that's the absolute rejection of all of what God has called a woman to do. Mm -hmm. And it's very feministic, meaning they hate children, the the thought of even being a yeah. homeward focused They're wife cursed. is absolutely disgusting and deplorable, right? Yep. And that's probably easier to spot out for most Christians. Most Christians, they're, I don't they're think... They're a loud bunch. That's probably why. No, yeah, they're washing on DC with pink hats on their heads. Right. and Like, if it's easy to spot those. Yeah. Um, not so easy to spot the other crowd and see where their errors are. Mm -hmm. The problem is that women do not find our identity necessarily in our calling. Our identity is being made in the image of God. That's where we're validated. That is what makes us who we are, right? Yep. Like that is that is what makes us worth anything is that we are created in God's image and Jesus Christ died for us, rose from the dead, giving us new life and now enables us to walk in obedience to him. And he's recreating all the broken things in us yep. and rightly ordering all the things that are disordered in us. So now we can get back to the original uh, life giving task that God had given to us. And it doesn't consume us. It doesn't become the thing. It doesn't become the goal unto itself, right? Because even yeah. when you have children or you're married or whatever, like you've reached this goal. Yep. Now what? Like a lot of women have this empty nest syndrome or they have four or five kids under tow. Right. And they were told this lie that if I just get married and have kids, then I'll feel then validated fulfilled. and fulfilled. And it turns out that having a sink full of dirty dishes and six kids begging for a snack, laundry, like all this stuff happening doesn't feel super fulfilling, but it's because they bought a lie that's just as destructive as the feminist lie. Yeah. So we guard against those two dishes, those Did two dishes, <laughs> those two ditches. Yes. And we stick to, again, I would say stick to the Bible, stick to what, stick to what God calls uh, you to God do. God has taught you to do in there. So be fruitful, multiply, and then. Um, I mean, we're going to get more into parenting later. We'll about... get more into parenting. But I do think it's important to note that um, the ultimate goal of a Christian woman is to obey God. Right. Whatever that looks like. And it can be different if you're single versus mm -hmm. married. 
infertile versus 12 kids versus two kids. Like it, it can be a little bit take different. different shapes and sizes. Yes, and... different cultures, different yeah. situations. I get it. There's grace. Unbelieving spouse or not. Exactly. There are no shortage of different situations. But at the core, a Christian woman must obey God supremely. Mm -hmm. And then she submits to her husband, who right. hopefully, if he's a godly man, is husbanding her yeah biblically, causing her right. to be fruitful and i don't mean fruitful only in the sense of like he's having kids he's constantly getting her pregnant right though that is important like that is a yeah. very important thing and the bible even says that women will be saved through childbirth mm -hmm. so like there's something to that very important and that's an integral piece it's an integral piece but like you have to rightly align yourself mm -hmm. like you're made in God's image, you obey him, then you are also yeah. taken from your husband, so you submit to him, and then everything else falls under those categories. Yeah. So the, the pastoral epistles are particularly helpful when it does come to uh, the, the roles of men and women. And for women in particular, um, that is where you find a, a verse talking about women needing mm -hmm. to be homeward focused. Yeah. And so that that's why that's I said at the Titus beginning Titus 2, I believe. Awesome. That that's the first priority and that is the first starting point. Not right. only do we see that really just from reading Genesis 1 and 2, but then we see this um, command from Paul in Titus that women are to be homeward focused. And right. then in um, I think it's in 1 Timothy and I just know it's the pastorals. I think it's 1 Timothy though. It might not be, but Anyway, Paul says that the the uh, women are the home manager, mm -hmm. and the I can't remember the Greek word at the moment. Oikos despot, I think, is what it is. But basically, the charge of the home is the woman's, and as far as managing the home and the functions there and all that kind of thing, which mm -hmm. it would and just that's... be real difficult if you're not there. Well, and that's one thing that I that's where we're saying. What managing the home looks like is going to look different for, depending on yes. all those prior situations. It's right. not that you may not manage your home. You always must manage your home. That is just your mm -hmm. job given to you by God. But how you do that day to day might look differently if you have 12 kids versus no kids. Yep. Or if you um, have an unbelieving husband versus a believing husband or whatever. Right. It's going to look different and you have different children than everyone else, a different spouse than everyone else. Like you would never say, make this meal, have this schedule, yeah. use this laundry detergent. You have yeah. to clean your showers like it's this. It's not one like, size fits all. It's, that's, we're not being like, we're not saying that. What we're saying is you must, if you're a woman, find your home, your priority. Mm -hmm. That does not mean. Love it. Yes, that does not mean that once you have a home and a husband and a kids, that you will feel super fulfilled because actually it will eat away at you and you will not find it fulfilling because you will constantly be searching for something in your home that mm -hmm. isn't going to be there. It's only found in Jesus, yeah. right? And that's that's a huge lie in like... Reform circles? Yeah, and just popular Christian circles that obeying God in certain ways or whatever brings like this super deep fulfillment and satisfaction and stuff and then we chase these certain things like motherhood or or even homeschooling right or or whatever it is whatever and, your pet thing is yeah and we think oh there's where obeying god air quotes um is going to fulfill me and it's like no the it fulfillment won't. still comes only from jesus right and only from god and so no matter if it's an easy day or a hard day you can be fulfilled if you're doing it just because you want to obey God who has loved you, bought you, right. and saved you. And that's the lie. Like you, Because you love God, you are enabled to obey him. Mm -hmm. It's not that right. by your obedience, you feel good enough to be loved by God or something. Yeah. Like that's It's all mixed up, right? And I yeah. feel like that is a massive lie in more so re reform circles. Yeah. No, um, I can, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Big so time. I hope that's clear and not confusing. Yeah. But like once you understand like I'm art my good works are already accepted by God, right? Yeah, like yeah. if I have you know a burnt lasagna, God is not displeased with me, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's not what's yep. buying me favor. This is not an excuse to be lazy and like fall asleep on the couch for eight hours, ignoring yeah. your whole family and your lasagna's burned now. God's already accepted I'm not my saying works. that. You didn't do any works. <laughs> but what I'm saying is 
doing the good works isn't what brings you satisfaction and validation. Mm -hmm. It's because you have um, standing, right standing before God that now you can do those good works and they actually bring you joy. They're, yeah, they are the fulfillment of the relationship that's been established between you and God. Yes. So they, they are the natural consequence of that already fulfilled satisfaction in God. Yeah. Because he's established a covenant with you. Yeah. Um, I just read an awesome little booklet, and it is little. It's like 30-something pages by John Murray on the covenant of grace. And I suggest, I highly suggest it to anybody. It is pretty lofty, though. He's not the easiest. He's but, not the layman's go-to. Yeah. But when it comes to like conditions in the covenant, he shows how it's just the natural fulfillment of it. It's not, it wasn't that you had to do these things to then establish mm -hmm. the covenant. The covenant was established right. and then these conditions were the natural fulfillment and outflowing right. of the relationship that God established. Right. And you, well, really you even cool see, see that in how a woman does give life, right? Like the covenant between a husband and a wife is established. That's a good point. And the natural outpouring is life is life like yeah. that's just what happens and the same is true in our homes that's good um yeah so but those are all very i hope helpful once you learn this mm -hmm. i think it's so freeing yeah. like, I, I truly think like once you get past these like preconceived ideas of what you think you have to do for god and you just realize like this is what god's called me to do and i can joyfully obey him mm -hmm. it's so free then you see all the yeah. freedom that God has given to you to right. figure out how you're going to homeschool, how you're going to cook for your family, how you're going to clean. All these things actually become not shackles, like binding yeah. you to your home, but like liberating. You have all these options and this little home that you get to manage. And it's just like God saying to Adam and Eve, make the rest of the world yeah. look like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we live the Christian life by principle and by the few commands that we're given. Yeah. Right. We we are like the Old Testament has 600 something laws and but a lot of them are all summed up in love God, love your neighbor. And we live our Christian life mm. principled in this way. And then so if we know like the command is to raise your children in the Lord, to give God a godly heritage. Mm. Is that Micah or Malachi? I know it's the M1, but I can't remember. Sure. But it specifically states that what God desires is a godly heritage. He wants us mm -hmm. to raise Christians. And yeah. so, but there's no law on like, that means it's 30 minutes every night like this. And we're going to get into the more of the parenting stuff in further episodes. But as far as mothers go, right, you think, okay, well, what am I going to do? It's just raise the godly kids. And then you just use wisdom and pragmatism and living your daily life, whether you're one kid or seven or 15. Or it's none. It's going to look differently um, how you obey that command. And so you know, as the foundation, I need to obey this. And so you try one thing, it doesn't work. Well, you this try is, another thing, you just keep doing this it. This is the priest, king, prophet thing that we've talked about with James Jordan before too. Yeah. Um, like everyone goes through these steps in their Christian yeah. walk. Right. It's priest, king, and then prophet. The priests just do what they're told, right? right? So like with our daughter, our oldest daughter right now, she's about to be 11. She just does what she's told. Mm -hmm. We are discipling her. We're growing her up and our youngest one too. But we can see her becoming a little adult. Yeah. She's at that stage now where we actually get to see some of the fruit starting to grow. Right. And But she's at that priesthood stage where she just does what she's told. Right. She just follows black and white, she yes, no, the rules. the rules. Yeah. Just like the priest did. God gave the priest rules for how to do sacrifices and they just followed the rules. Exactly. Um, when you get married, then you kind of graduate into this like kingship. If you're faithful. Yeah. You, if you're faithful yeah. in the priesthood, then you're given a godly spouse and hopefully you become a king. Right. Yeah. And now kings are faced with making decisions. Right. Now you take that foundation of obeying all the rules this whole time. And now you apply wisdom to it. You're given kingly wisdom. Mm -hmm. The cup, like Jordan says, the yep. wine, the cup now, um, that the, that the king holds. Um, as he makes decisions for the whole realm that now, yeah, now you've grown up, you're outside of the house now, you're on your own and now you have to make your own decisions. Now where you have do your own live? house to manage. Yeah. Where, where do we get a house? Do we yeah. buy? Do we rent? There's all these things that you use the wisdom that you learned as a priest mm -hmm. to now apply it. 
as a king. Right. So a lot of this does take that kind of kingly wisdom. Like Mm -hmm. it's not just so black and white where you can say, well, if you live in the suburbs, then you're not a godly wife. Because if you were a real godly wife, you would be living in the country and you would have a massive garden and you would can (laughs) all of your food. And like it, we're not saying any of that, right? What we're saying is you have to assume some kind of kingly role because you are the steward, the manager of your home. Right. It's going to take some kind of kingly wisdom and you only get that by delving into god's word right yeah and that would be the other like foundational encouragement we would give to everybody is get yourself into the word a lot and and find godly women like find Mm -hmm. a woman in your circle who has mature godly children who she's raised into mature godly children um, so you know she actually knows what she's talking about when she gives her. you advice. Go learn from her. Mm-hmm. Tell her, good, be dude. in my life. Tell me when I'm doing something wrong. Yep. You have to be humble enough to have one person in your life be able to tell you that was really stupid. Yeah. What was it like when your daughter was 11? Right. And then when she says, hey, um, I saw that your daughter talked to you this way when you asked her this question. You might want to consider if that's a really appropriate response. I'm not sure if you noticed that in her, Mm -hmm. but I I just saw it and I think you should consider whether or not it's appropriate and whether it be fruitful. Um, If no one's talking to you that way, you're probably going to have a much harder road ahead of you than what you need. Yeah. Yep. You'll feel alone, right? Yeah, because in Titus 2, it says that, Older women are to train us to love our husbands and our children. Mm -hmm. Like that is the primary job of someone who is an empty nester, Mm -hmm. who has, you know, lots of spare time. And now they can come into our homes or we can go into their homes and they can teach us all the things that they've learned. Yeah. Now they're, that older godly woman is in the prophet stage, right? Now she's graduated from kingship and gone into the prophet stage. And now she can share her wisdom and experience with right. you exactly so this all sounds good right like sure this is this who, yeah, who get wouldn't, to it. Who wouldn't agree time. with us right like if you are yeah who would ref- disagree with if you this? are reformed and complementarian this probably sounds good right yet sounds there good to me this is where i'm going to tick you off yet there are many of you who always want to be the exception to the rule Mm, there are the many of the you out there who are listening to us, and I don't know who you are. So this is, if you feel pricked, it's not me pricking you. It is the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. There are many of you who do not like being in your homes, who mm-hmm. do not find joy uh, in stewarding or managing them, mm-hmm. who have neglected learning skills like cooking and cleaning and homeschooling because there's no joy to be found there. Right. There are many of you who just think my husband can do it. He's better at it or I'll hire someone else to do it, or my mother will do it, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. We're always the exception to the rule. Christians, Christian women are really good at finding the loophole. I have, before you continue on, because this is really good, but it does like, it's sad when I see, mostly on social media, I've seen this where it's talking about cooking, Mm -hmm. and many women, I don't know them, but many women And these are Christian, even Reformed on certain Facebook groups. Many of them will proudly say, well, my husband does all the cooking. Yeah. My husband always cooks dinner. What you're really saying is my husband's taken a portion of my role. Right. That's not to say a man can't cook a meal. No. We're not saying that. I cook some mean mac and cheese every now and again. (laughs) Tell you what. Actually, we're having your ribs tonight. Grant makes some really good ribs. Anyway. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is not that a man can never step foot in the kitchen. No. But if a man is out working all day long, mm-hmm. supporting his family, and then he has to come home and manage the home too, right? then he's not actually being a good husband, and he's not actually causing his wife to flourish and grow in her role. And that is sin on his part, but yeah. it is also sin on a, a wife's part sometimes because she is being lazy. Yeah, and... If you're a guy listening to this and you're like, yeah, tell these women to be more... I know and have seen too many men who are finicky and uh, uh, 
picky like, eaters. Pick, picky eaters. They're yeah. they're even uh, complaining about certain decorations in the house. Yeah. Or where something gets put in that cabinet or this closet yeah. or whatever. And it's like, dude, you are actually in like inhibiting your wife from obeying God and the role that he's given her to yeah. manage the home. Back off. Be happy that she's, she's trying trying to fulfill that role. Be like, that's awesome, babe. I'm so happy. Can, can I help you hang those curtains? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but like, well, you you organized this whole room. Don't complain. Like, where'd that go? Or I don't, you know what yeah. I mean? You're, don't be frustrated that she's trying to grow in her skills. And this is, this is not, we're not saying that you have to be like a gourmet cook. Lord knows I am not. What I'm saying is this is... That's why they get TV shows. There's not a ton of those. Yeah, it turns out. Although I think you could have a TV show, babe. But what I'm saying is this is a a job God gave to you. Don't abdicate, right? Right. Take joy. And and I would have said, and I might have said the same thing to the men, that work a lot of times is not fun in and of itself. But that's not what you get your fulfillment and joy in is is the specific job that you have or whatever. It's not to say that you have to be miserable doing it, right? No, it's in being able to work. Yeah. Whatever it is to the Lord. And I I heard someone recently just talk about how, you know, when a man comes home, the family should rejoice that he got another day to work. Yeah. It was another day to work unto the Lord. And that should just be something we love doing. Yep. You know, you just love that. Right. And rather than like thinking, ugh, I have to make another meal. Be like, wow, God gave me food yeah. for me to feed my family. Yeah, that's big. more than some people get, <laughs> like yeah, no, truthfully. True. And here we are fussing and angry and upset that we have to make another meal mm-hmm. every night, right? Yeah. It's like, be grateful. Thank God. Yeah. Learn how to make really good meals. Learn how to be creative in your meal making. Learn to stretch yourself, right? Learn to make things that you have never eaten before or things that like yeah. you didn't grow up eating and now you're going to try your hand at making them and have your kids learn to love trying new foods and broaden their palates and their horizons. And like that actually is a really good thing for your kids too. Yeah. Say we're in the new heavens, new earth, so we're going to have a yeah. new entree and a new dinner or new dessert. And all of it belongs to King Jesus, so we're going to learn yeah. to make it all. We're going to learn to be creative mm-hmm. and steward all the things, and it's just right. going to be a really fun t- It can be fun and enjoyable, right? Yeah. It can be, and it is a yeah. matter of perspective a lot of the time. Yeah, and one thing we all could do more of is give thanks to the grace of King Jesus Yeah. All, more so throughout the day, not just before dinner, but before all the meals and during this and during that and all. Yep. That's something that we, we should be doing way more throughout our days. Well, and realizing that how you are executing your role as a wife mm-hmm. and as a home manager is also simultaneously catechizing your kids. Yeah. True. Like you're, you're training them how your daughters how are go. watching you and your attitude. Right. If you are constantly begrudging the chores and the tasks God gave to you, that's what your daughters are going to think. They're going to look yep. at your role and think, gosh, mom hates being a stay-at-home mom. What a terrible role I don't she ever want to do that. She seems miserable. Yeah. And the same with your sons. Like, well, your sons are watching your grumpy attitude all of the time. And then they're going to think, well, that's what a Christian woman looks like. I guess I better yeah. find one of those. Yeah, either that's what they'll marry or they'll never marry. <laughs> yeah, either way, it's not good. <laughs> and I and I would encourage the men, too, who are watching this to, and, and I kind of already said it um, in, in some sort of way, but just to glory in mm. the women who are, who, who are obeying God in this way and who are trying to, to be focused on the things that God has commanded them to be focused on. So when a, you know, a woman's pregnant, you know, give God praise for that and, and encourage the men around you. What an amazing thing that is. And just really mm-hmm. talk it up. I don't think we do that enough. Um, you know, when someone posts a picture of, you know, a their loaf pregnant, of bread they made. Or, or their or pregnant wife or... Whatever. you just yeah. like, that's incredible. That's amazing. Praise God for that. Like, give give all the attention to that. And right. we need to give way more attention to that, especially the men should mm-hmm. give tons of attention to that because it is a glorious thing right. that, that God has given women to do. And it's inspiring. Typically, when one woman gets on the train and thinks like, this is actually really enjoyable. Yeah. 
Like I'm not chained to my house. I'm free in my house. I'm right. safe in my house. I get to steward this house. That is a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. Typically other women look in and they see it and they think, huh, I think I've been looking at this all wrong. And then they yeah. switch their minds and you just like see the light bulb go off and it is a glorious yeah. thing to watch. I've seen it happen many times. Well, isn't that, I mean, that's like Instagram anyway, right? You look, you go, how she decorate that? How that, right. that looks awesome. That right. What did she make? What is right. she wearing? And it is inspiring to just, when someone is, right. uh, taking you know the rule of their home seriously and you can tell and serious doesn't mean not fun no definitely not right yeah we didn't say somber or yeah like this should be super fun and it, we do this all the time in our family when i make a meal or we do try yeah. a new meal everyone would be like okay mom's making a new recipe so then we all take a couple of bites and we're like mm, we're gonna we're gonna maybe not make this one again or it's okay but i think you could have added more of this or yeah. like and it's it's a whole fun thing for our family to actually like enjoy and make a game out of and it's like a thing that we look forward to and it doesn't have to be like here's your bread and water eat it happily here's your porridge yeah <laughs> make it fun it can be fun Definitely. right um well. so we talked about the exceptions and there are valid exceptions to the rules, right? Right. Usually we, if you're if you're dying to find the exception of the rule, you're probably not the one who has one. Right. Um, but there are legitimate. Usually if I, you are walking with God, um, you know that you're the exception. Like usually it's pretty clear. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. If you are the exception, you typically know for sure you're the exception. Yeah. Like if you're a single mom. Clearly, this isn't an option for you. Right. Right? You, you, you'll you just starve if you don't But even work. in scripture, though, there is something said about the single woman. That if she's under the age of 60, the Bible actually encourages her to get married. Yeah, no, it's true. So, like, if you're a single woman, a goal for you should be get married. Find a good godly husband right. who allows for you to stay home and raise your kids. Right. And become fruitful there. Like, it's... The Bible's not quiet on many of these things right um and just because you're an exception in a moment doesn't mean that you're an exception forever Always, either yeah. right like mm -hmm. if you're and if you're a single girl i think of we have a daughter who is not too far away from leaving our she's plenty home. far <laughs> <laughs> and i i think of her and i think i don't want her to ever think like the next stage of her life is getting a career right that should never be um the next step the next, after leaving my home yeah like the the proper the biblical progress for a christian woman is to be from under her father's roof and authority and headship mm -hmm. to being underneath her husband's roof and authority and headship right like that's the progression there she doesn't go from being under her father to under her college professor to her husband mm -hmm. right like or a, the and boss it's, or ceo or... yeah like and i think we've got that twisted yeah. And I think because we've gotten it twisted, a lot of women feel like if they aren't under a CEO or under a boss or whatever, that they're not contributing to the home or they're not yeah. being productive enough. Doing their or... part in the world. Right. Which is, yeah, just such a, a lie because what what bigger part could you play in the world than to raise godly kids who will then go out and either raise more if it's a girl or be the men being right. the ceos and the managers and the builders and right and all that in the world and making them godly because you've raised them to be godly right right and i think it is a massive lie because you've bought culture's lie stating that that is the height of glory is mm -hmm. to become a career woman and and um contribute to the finances of your home that's that's the peak of like feminine glory right yeah we have now become equal to our husbands and that's like that feminist lie that we talked about yep. we've now matched our husbands so we've met our our I don't potential know, potential <laughs> yeah right like, yeah. and that's just a lie because that was never the potential that god created us to meet right god had something totally separate for us and that's why you're not finding fulfillment in either ditch because both ditches are wrong yeah there's a third way, and it's the better yeah. way. It's the godly way. Totally. Well, if there's something that we 
missed that you think should have been in here? We could have talked for a really long time going How, through all the details of this. What are we at right now? Uh, 45, 45 minutes. Yeah. We'll go through some Q&A maybe next episode. Yeah. And nail, Send us quick, yeah, that's nail good. some of this out. So please comment your questions or message us your questions. It can be totally anonymous. If you want to just send us a message, if you want to comment, then obviously everyone else will know who asked the question. But mm -hmm. go ahead and we will we'll, we'll dig into those and try to answer some of your questions or push back or if something wasn't clear or whatever. We would love it. We would love the interaction. But we hope that this was helpful at least, uh, whether it's stuff you already knew and it was good to be reminded or whatever. I'm glad that this, uh, we hope that this was helpful for you. Yep. Um, you good? I'm good. Awesome. Um, well, as always, thanks for listening. Like and share with your friends if you appreciated the content. We uh, pray that you would be immovable and steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Until next time, whoa.